Oh, crap. Oh, cork is made from the cork tree. Oh, okay. Wine is made from the wine tree. Cool. Oh, I see what you mean. Now you know how to make corks. Oh, yeah, okay. This is what the corks are made of. Yeah, how to... I'm a lot of corkscrews! I'm not debating whether or not to join the wine Downstairs, to his dismay, looks like half the collection is just destroyed. He takes his hand, touches it to his tongue, touches it to the ground, touches it to his tongue again. As ajus ajus, which is I am tasting the stars. And that was champagne. Anyone have an idea who that was? That was Dom Perignon. Later, 2D just proved that someone did create that before, but that was all a mistake, right? And that was the, if you ever go to France in Champagne, that monastery is still available for viewing, and that is the story of Don Perignon. But in reality, what happened? It was a huge mistake. That was a blunder, right? If you do that now, which still does happen, you lose your job. <laughs> Winemaker's fired. Well, everything is gone. That's not going to be too great. So, problem with that now, control. And that's what we do now. Everything is much more controlled. I want you to just think about something we're going to pass around downstairs. So, problem he had, those wines could not hold that pressure in that bottle. It was around this time of year. You remember last week we had that, those like 15 degree nights out here? That's basically what happened because France and Long Island are very similar in those latitudes where we have similar weather patterns. Right? So it got really cold one night and it went through a second fermentation. There was still yeast and sugar still left over in that wine and it hit a second fermentation the bottle basically turned into a bomb and it exploded while he was upstairs and it set off all the other bottles and it destroyed a lot of the, a lot of the wine that he had stored in the cellar. And again, that happens now, you're in trouble and it still does happen. You actually have wines that'll pop on the shelf. You have people that are storing wines and stuff gets destroyed. There's lost, that's a lot of money. It's not like it would be dangerous to your health or anything like that, but it's lost problems. Right? It's kinda of loud in there. Normally yeah. I talk a little bit more in here. Yeah. But let's go downstairs and it'll be nice if we do a little bit more down there. Now also be aware this is actually where we do discord champagne, so it is active. Just be careful where you're walking, there's grates down the middle, and of course we have it lit, so take your time, walk slow, and we'll meet on the other side right over here. <laughs> Careful, hang on to the steps, it's dark. <laughs> Isn't this like Ave Maria? <laughs> Just a few, uh, 
be able to hear a little bit more, but the idea that it's on, I'll just get back to that in a later slide, alright? Alright, so that is actually a glycol machine um, which we use to freeze the necks of the bottle, but to even get to that point. So, Dom and his issues and the problems that he had. He had a second fermentation in the bottle, and the bottle cannot withstand that pressure and it exploded. Alright? That gets to champagne bottles. I just want you to kind of hand your hand here, just gonna pass this around, okay? And just feel the weight of this because this is what a normal still in France and champagne actually take their wine after they put them into lugs for entourage and they put them six feet, okay. six feet underwater for pressurized aging. A different way of doing tourage. I wish there was something in there doing that. <laughs> so, how to perfect this and what we do. So champagne, usually for us we harvest around the first to second week in September and we are going for acidity and we're going for brightness in the wine. Okay? So we harvest the first or second week and it's all hand picked and we begin to press the wine. We only take about a third of the juice, the most delicate or precious juice, and we then tank it. It goes into the tank and we start a fermentation about 7 to 14 days. Now, this is where the winemaker likes to call it champagne because it's a pain. So now the gentleman will be taking slides and counting microbes. So he will be making sure that the wine will have enough to go through a second fermentation in the bottle after it is removed from the tank. So we will then take the wine that is from the tank and fill each one of these bottles on our bottling line and then cap them. All right? The bottles will then be laid down on tirage for however long we would like. They'll second ferment in the bottle and for almost every minute that it sits on tirage it gains about a bubble to a certain point. So every little bubble you see it sits and gains. That's a time thing. Champagne. Also usually that means price to go up. But tirage also affects taste. It's how long you age it. Depending on the bridal it will affect what the wine tastes like. What we'll be trying today, just to give you an idea, you're having a wine that has sat on tirage for six and a half years. Right? And it's made from Pinot Meunier. When it sits that long, it gains a nuttiness, a cakiness to it. It's a little bit more of a body. We only we press that wine and don't allow any skin contact, so it creates a clear or a golden champagne from a red grape. Not pinkish, not red, because we only take a certain amount of the juice, the most delicate juice. So, sat our tirage, maybe someone has started to open the bottles and we are tasting them, we're at a point where we actually like it. We're, we're liking what we're, what we're trying. So, you come over here, right? Anyone still have a flip phone? Oh, anyone has a smartphone? My smartphone's really old, but I was driving my other one, so that's the only reason that is. Uh, so, this is the flip phone version of smartphone world now. These are called riddling racks. We no longer use them. Last time we used them was about 14 years ago. I want to say for fruits and champagne. This will result in a lot of human error or problems. We now have a machine that will take the bottles and we stack them and shapes the bottles back and forth to riddle away all the sediment, right? Because there is still dead yeast and unclean wine inside that bottle. But if we were doing this the normal way, after the wines are sat on to us, we would then take them, they would all be lined up on the observing racks, front and back, and there would be a, a marker on the bottle, usually a chalk line, and someone would have to turn this bottle four to eight times a day to, to complete revolutions, one or two. Problem with that, you got a guy with a Rangers hat on. What if it's a Rangers game? You played last night, they suck, they lose. Next day is not going to be so good. Our winemakers are Raiders fans. They lose all the time for football. <laughs> he comes in, there's going to be a lot of error. He's probably going to have too many that night. The issue is, we need to make sure this is done properly. So, what if one doesn't quarter turn or we have someone moving them around? Human error. The machine, you push a button, done. Don't touch it when it comes back. And that brings us over to here. Once we have riddled all the dead yeast that is for 
leftover unclean wine, it comes over to this light bulb machine, which I had running. Uh, it might affect it a little bit that it's not as cold now. And we are going to then please get this wine out. Take out the unclean wine. And what this does, we actually have the bottles sitting upside down. Thank you, man. And that is propylene glycol. And what that is, is a food grade antifreeze, right? That goes way below freezing, and it can freeze alcohol, right? And it's a liquid. So it actually freezes the neck, and we are then going to shoot that dead beast, everything else, and we are going to disgorge the wine. This is one of the coolest parts, right? It's one of the things I usually make a mess here. Last time I left my suit on, I was telling people before, I didn't do that too well, right? <laughs> Uh, usually, if I'm doing that, it's usually during the summer in August, and I have a full vest on, gloves, and probably eyewear and uh, mask. <laughs> so it's a little bit different, right? Uh, so I need this. This comes down to an art, right? I've been doing this seven years, and I am still not good at it, right? <laughs> I would like to say I am okay at it. Uh, we have a gentleman here named Osario who is talented. We will just say. <laughs> I'm going to get into a reason why this is an art and because we have loss when we do this. So I'm going to then take the bottle and we never want to touch this because we sometimes play a game where we stick their hand in well, this burns. Uh, <laughs> it is very cold liquid. Like it hurts my hand right now, right? Uh, and I'm just <laughs> cleaning off this neck and I have not moved this and we are going to shoot the frozen part of this neck out into the barrel, right? There is an angle, there is a method, it's mostly muscle memory, it's just doing it. I've done it, I don't know how many years. I'm gonna do it more than once just so everyone gets an idea. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay, so the sad part, we now made this wine clean. All the sediment is out. But this was actually pretty bad. <laughs> actually, really bad. Usually, you should only lose about a sixth to an eighth inch. So it's got to be the height of a shelf. So that's, that's the only reason. I got it. <laughs>
this. If it's one, it's a lot slower than you do it in any process. So once I've disgorged and I've filled, all I do is Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what do we look at what that looks like, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we call the screamer. We don't want to put our face anywhere near this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually showed you people this one. This should be done almost immediately. So usually we'll have a bunch ready that are filmed, and then we go to the corking process, then the caging process. Because how much pressure is inside this bottle is scary. Yeah. Right? Okay. So once I've had the cork on, This is the cage machine. When I'm working the Sario, he hates this noise. <laughs> I like it. It's like almost like numbing. It's mind It makes you feel good. I'm gonna turn it on just to give you an idea. That's just the noise that it makes when it's running. I listen to music when I do it, so he gets a little bit mad because he doesn't listen to music. Alright? Hey, this machine was made for Americans. Alright? That's what everyone else will say because you crush your hand. You lose a digit, no problem, your finger would be gone. You actually make it so you have to have both hands on both sides of the machine <laughs> to press the buttons. Yeah. So yeah. Full proof is a great word for this, I like that. Yeah. Because, no error, no smashing hand, they still have an attention on it, but all I'm going to do is I turn this on, Yeah, it's fine. It's caged. Yeah, it's caged. Right? Of course, the bottle is still cold. Because uh, we've had it in the light pump machine. So we actually hand label all of our wine too. So it's another 24 to 48 hours before we finish and put the label on it. And in essence, finish the wine. But that almost feels like 10 minutes of me talking. And yeah, I'll show you one at what, what speed we would actually do it at just to give you an idea. Right? Right? And Coolest thing, I'm going to try to open it with you no. because Thanks. this will be so hard to open. This is like this is like the man test to be trying to open oh, this because no. it is, it's, it's not coming out. Think about that cork and you're trying to press that. That was just pressed inside this bottle. You don't want to open that for at least a week. Yeah. <laughs> So almost true speed, I would be working here. I would be a little bit more low, put the uh, vest on, everything would be good. And there would be a line of corks sitting here. You have a cork inside, okay? And there would be a line of caps. This cage is something also we didn't really get into. So cage is very important because the cage goes on the underlip and it's just a wire that will pull down that cork. This is very important. Sometimes people open wines or just open this and the cork comes out. Mm -hmm. The doctor had it. Mm, it's still pressure, but yes, mm -hmm. that's so, or the cork could be bad or mm -hmm. something like that. But it can go it can go to many different things. So like that is an answer. But the favorite thing that the doctor used to do, are we ready for this year? Alright, I called the Gotta Grand Medical Center because he was actually a doctor in Stony Brook, so it's a little bit different. How many people went to the hospital on New Year's Eve this year? Hmm. Or last year? Twenty seven. All right. That's how many people went to the hospital saying that they got punctured by a uh, cap or a bottle of uh, champagne. All right. Uh, and that was this year. Right? <laughs> and I want to tell you, I bet you not every single one that went to the hospital told you, oh, yeah, I did it open the No, you were like, oh, I fell or something. Yeah. 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 I would have thought I was the door now. I fell into the door. It's perfect. And it's usually this thing that's cutting you. He always had a different number every year. Doctor was a he was a family doctor in Stony Brook, so he always had a number for that. Uh, and I could have got some fake numbers too, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cage is on. Just to give you an idea of, of like an actual case of this. I don't have this on because I'll be wasting a lot, but this is about a two second lever, and then then done. Just to give you an idea. So I come over here. Bottle is white. That's burning. <laughs> Filled. And 
file is done, right? That's about the pace we'll run. You want it. Wine is important. Champagne is important. You want to make sure you're doing everything properly. If you rush things, it affects taste. It affects how the product turns out. That is very important. Uh, the also, the other thing that this machine does, it's also a dosage and filling machine. All of our wines that we make here just for our label approval are all natural. Another French word that I still do not pronounce properly, but that's how we say it. All natural means nothing added, right? So it is method champenois from start to end, and we do not add anything to the champagne. But we, we actually do make some other champagnes that are not for us, and we do a little dosage. This little lemon, best thing in the world. I don't know. Really Little, little Remy Martin inside some champagne sounds great to me. That does affect taste and flavor profile in aged wines. Usually there'll be a little bit of a sugar added depending on your state or your state authority laws and what you can add. Um, and that will dosage up to 120 cc. That is a lot. Usually most will be 5, 10, 15 because there are eight different levels of sweetness when you get to champagne. But 5 ml goes a lot. That would still be, we'll see, depending on how much sugar it is, still group 0 to 3% RS. And it is less noticeable in champagne than it is in anything else when you have sweetness because it is a palate cleanser. It just rolls on your tongue or bubbles on your tongue where you don't have an effect. So sweetness almost like evaporates until you get into higher level sweetness. That's why brute, if you have a 3% RS, still want it to taste sweet, right? You try a recent that tastes sweet, but if you had a previous on our champagne, it may not be as noticeable. Now the best part, consumption. <laughs> <laughs> I always say disgorgement is the best part, but that's all right too. So opening the bottle, right? Now what we do for this, we would have, we like to call this Casper, the friendly ghost. Do something better than a paper towel, don't use this, because this has no weight. Just your average rag that you have yeah. in the kitchen, something you use for cooking. I always keep them on the stove when I pull that off. And what you're gonna do is just keep this away from your face, and you're going to open the cage, all right? And you're gonna keep the, you're going to keep the towel on top, all right? You can see that it almost formed a little bit after that in the cage versus that press that we had where it looked like it was screaming out. And what you're going to do is just because sometimes that could come right off. And what we're going to do is apply downward pressure and we are going to just twist the bottom. This one might not be coming off, don't worry about that. Very slow. Uh, it's just all about pressure. Very slow. slow. Very slowly. And we very are applying slow. downward pressure. Everyone wants, wants it. Americans, I'm American. What do we want? We want it now. Take your time. It should be 30 to 60 seconds and when we're opening most champagnes. If you hear a pop, who likes to pop the bottle of champagne? I always get it but guess what? You don't want to open the pop the bottle of champagne. When you pop the bottle of champagne, when you open it, you lose it. You lose taste, you lose effervescence for the time that it sat down on the leaves, and it can affect taste. You can lose up to a, a sixth of the bottle's effervescence by doing that. And if you just apply downward pressure, the only noise you should hear is. That's all you should hear when opening the bottle of champagne. There should be no pop. It should just be a. That is it. Right? There is a big thing now. I actually love it. Oh no! Maybe we'll have one next year. You still shouldn't open the bottle that way anyway. It's a diamond edge uh, knife, and you can actually either cut out the glass, or you can actually uh, cut the cork. Cut the edge. Depending on the edge, right? <laughs> We got a gallon. So we have the, we we got have the bottle one. open. <laughs> this is actually one of Dr. Preston's. It's like 30 years old. All right. uh, and this is a crystal glass. You can see that little rainbow. Oh, yeah. Chicken electric. Crystal noise, light free. 
right? This is a traditional champagne glass. Uh -huh. If you get married today, guess what? You might even still get these at your wedding. But my, my, my. <laughs> but this is not good for champagne. This is terrible for champagne. Use this for shrimp cocktails, some pudding, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. But this does not promote effervescence in your glass. Any idea how this was created? And I think you know some glass. Yeah, I, 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 I know. I know. Okay. All right. So stay quiet. Anyone else know how this was created? If you don't know, most of that is going to tell you. Anything. I'm a glass maker. Any idea? All right. This was actually idealized after the perfect woman. Who was that? Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. And this was her cup size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Right? Wow. And that's what all champagne glasses are made of. They're actually the same, same ounce size that you see when you still produce these. It's like a cup figurine that they use. She drank a lot of champagne. She drank a lot in general, right? The ideal woman. Whose breast was? Marie, Marie Antoinette. Antoinette. All right. <laughs> that's another. But in reality, <laughs> we shouldn't use this. Is that Rob? <laughs> That will promote effervescence in your glass, which affects taste and profiles. That it will actually help it a lot. If you have either silver glasses, oh, I don't that's good. good uh, and if you have silver and you would actually line your glass, you can actually have the bubbles follow up. The doctor used to do that as a quick little trick. I don't know, silver like that. He did. Just for my blood, but that's okay. Right? And crystal is your best friend. Lead free affects taste. Most people know that. You're a regular glass. You can spend some money on some glassware if you don't break stuff. Like John and I, John can never have nice glasses. He breaks like three glasses a day. So I'm guessing that would be the one difference, right? So always a flute. Yeah, they even have these new things that are called like vocals. I don't even know if I can pronounce that right. And they're a new way of producing, of drinking champagne, and it's and it promotes the most flavor profile and effervescence in your glass. Couple companies making them lead free based. Riedel, of course, their iron companies, probably $10 a glass, $15 a glass. Don't not to look they're good, right? So, even the better part, because now you actually get to consume it, right? So, what we are trying today, 2010 harvest, mm -hmm. very rare. That was one of the flagship years from Long Island. This has sent almost six and three quarter years on garage, on the leaves, <coughs> dual tasting, no needs to this one. So we think no you can escape to it, a heavy to a champagne. 100% Pinot Meunier, first press. If you have any other questions, I will be walking around. Enjoy. Okay. Let's go. Thank you very much. Oh, chicken on the key. And this one. <laughs> wet caviar. That's wet caviar.
with friends. Like, no, I'm with friends. Do with friends giving kind of thing. Because cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, what we do is we just have the kids. Okay. So they will go everybody else. So you do it do a Black Friday party. Yeah. 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 Well, we would just start to tear it apart. Relaxing day. Yeah. 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 Go out the box for him. And that would be Yeah, we got a... Uh, what do we get for this? I better go. Because we're going to finish on the... No, I'm going to go this way and then down the uh, walkway. Because it's too... What, are you going to go back to? Did it taste it? Or yeah. Why, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.